Ambassador Sandhu, for some of these high-tech deals to go through, not just does India need the Biden administration on board, the U.S. congressional view matters as well. And we've already seen, even in an alliance like the AUKUS, uh, the Australia-UK, U.S. nuclear submarine deal got held up uh, because of a congressional review, because of the Arms Export Control Act. Now take, for example, the GEF 414 jet engine deal. How confident are you by speaking to members uh, in the Congress uh, that India will be able to get support to get these deals through? That it's not just the announcement, but the announcement will also be followed by the backing of the U.S. Congress, which will allow for these deals to be operationalized. So Rahul, you are talking to someone who actually started his career in the United States in the U.S. Congress. And look, the doomsday scenario from the 90s, from the days Burton Amendment used to be put in and etc., etc. You know, everyone used to be talking about that and in a different way, look where we have come. You know, I used to be fighting the Burton Amendment on the floor at that time. And today, we have a situation when the Prime Minister of India has been invited the second time. And he actually joins a club of very few. Look at the facts. And that letter of invitation was bipartisan. It was actually signed the day after there was a huge vote on the US Congress. And I don't want to go into that domestic part. Look how India united all the four leaders to come together and look at the letter, look at the warmth that was expressed. So I am talking of facts. I am not saying the challenges don't come. In any democratic polity, the challenges come. But I think there is a clear expression. Look at the way congressmen and senators are coming out and welcoming Prime Minister Modi. In fact, his invite to come to the hill and speak also indicates that there is a lot of interest in the India story. People are very, very keen to listen to him. And what you are saying, whatever comes, we will certainly face it and it will go well. I think expression on the hill for having the Prime Minister come there and speak to them itself is reflective that there is a bipartisan support across the aisles in the U.S. Congress. And that's very reassuring to hear, and that would be very useful in the future as well. There are, of course, topics which are of interest to uh, people at a macro level and a more micro level. Many of our viewers would be interested in the status of visas, work visas uh, like the H-1B visa in the United States for Indian professionals. Is that at all on the agenda? Also, the waiting time to get American visas for Indian citizens traveling for different purposes to the U.S., so is there an effort to try, I, I spoke to the Indian, uh, I spoke to the U.S. ambassador in India, Eric Garcetti, and he said it's a key priority for the Biden administration and for him personally to try and reduce these fears. But is that at all uh, something which is coming up for discussion at an official level? So uh, I was about to say that this is a question for my good friend Eric Garcetti there, but you already, I know you asked him during the interview. In fact, you know, during the visa crisis, I used to often tell my American friends here that the people in India, the young in India who are actually asking for visas are the best friends of the United States. So therefore, whatever can be done to facilitate that should be done. I believe that during this visit, a number of initiatives are definitely up for discussions and also for implementation. And I'm sure Eric has spoken to you about it, but I do want to also take this opportunity to mention to you that there is a huge interest in U.S. universities about collaborating and tying up with Indian institutions. And this is not, I just mentioned to you that there are 200,000 Indian students here, two-thirds of them in STEM areas. Similarly, there is more desire to have Indian students. But I am not only talking about Indian students. Under the new education policy, there is much more increased interest in actually having campus-to-campus -campus relations with Indian universities 
having intertwining of degrees, having joint research work, etc., etc. And that all is being made possible by the new education policy. And therefore, I think this aspect of connecting the young on both the sides is very important and very critical.